You're listening to Creating a Universe, a Love Anarchy podcast hosted by William J. Rogers. On this show, we follow the journey of creatives, artists, and entrepreneurs who are making a name for themselves in the ever-evolving landscape of today's industry. Featuring an insight into both Love Anarchy and the Labaniverse music universe, as well as the individual projects and stories of each of our guests from the music industry and beyond. So whether you're a budding creative or simply interested in what goes on behind the scenes, this is the podcast for you. Hello and welcome to Creating a Universe. I'm your host, William J. Rogers, and today I'm here with countertenor vocalist Pete Rawcliffe. How's it going, Pete? Hi. Yeah, really, really good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, yeah, man. Good. good to have you here. Uh, yeah, it's good to be here. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> so That's right. Definitely for sure. nice to actually catch up. <laughs> so uh, if you're listening to this, hopefully by now you're uh, familiar with Pete. Uh, if, if not, you're obviously the, uh, you're a vocalist, uh, singer in a bunch of different projects, namely uh, Crown Solace, yeah. a kind of modern symphonic metal band. And you are, of course, the alter ego of the brand new Levaniverse <laughs> Very artist. Important urania fantasia so yeah yeah definitely definitely so it's it's nice it's nice to have so many different outlets and so many different things to to kind of focus on (laughs) because each of them are very representative of different parts of my personality so yeah it's really good if you haven't heard one of them then you definitely need to go out and check urania out that's that's the top one right now (laughs) for sure wow that's so as of this episode coming out the the song the arcane Mm muses actually just come out a few days ago yeah and uh yeah, it's been, it's been a long time coming, as you, as you alluded right. to. Yeah, uh, it has been. I mean, I was, try- I was trying to work it out, but I think that we've been in contact with one another for uh, a couple of years or so now. I think it must be. Yeah, it must be. Uh, at least at least a year and a half, if, if not more, definitely. And then uh, since I think... I remember actually quite quite clearly it was it was I was when I was in Greece that you sent me the idea for the song. So I know that yeah. that was around about October last year time. That um, was so that was when we started yeah, working yeah, yeah. on the song. Yeah. yeah. But contact together, yeah, I think it's gotta be around about two years. You know, like following each other's projects, seeing what we're all up mm-hmm. to, becoming invested in each other's stuff, which is quite nice. It's you know, good to chat with sure. each other. So yeah, it has been quite a while. Yeah, yeah, for for sure. I think I always remember that uh um I, I remember that I came in contact with you on Instagram uh, and uh, and we were following each other. But then you would also kind of separately come into contact with Yarima, I think, uh, oh, which was the page yeah. that Maria was running. Yeah. So I, we had both noticed you individually. <laughs> and then when we realized, we were like, oh. this guy. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that, yeah, of course. It was yeah, a cool I, sign. Run separate pages. Yeah, that's really cool. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, so, did you yeah. realize that? That's really interesting. Yeah, and I remember, I, I think I remember when I, when I moved into this place around a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, I remember. Yeah, just... no, I do remember that because you moved in and I remember you posting a story about you setting up your new studio. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, man, this looks really, really good. So that was, that, what, that was two years ago, was it? So it's yeah, more than that, two that years. was in 2020. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just more than two years. Crazy so, how time flies. I know, it's, it's gone yeah, quick. So we, as you say, we, we were chatting uh, for a good while and as you say, supporting each other in the, in the projects and... Yeah, I knew I knew from the get go. Like when I saw you, I, um, I thought like, you know, it would be great for mm-hmm. us to collaborate. And then especially once we kind of got talking more, yeah. like, I thought like, okay, we're really kind of on the same page with with a lot of things. So it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it's, I suppose it's taken a little while to to manifest. Mm-hmm. And as you say, we we started working on on the piece in. Um, around about October or oh, something. Right. Yeah, perhaps yeah. you did beforehand, yeah. but I don't know how long yeah. you were screwing away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, October was yeah. my first memory of it. Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, yeah, and now all of a sudden later, like it's finally, yeah. <laughs> finally being unleashed. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it is. But honestly, it's a labor of love, that song. It's been, it's been incredibly good to just experience that journey because I'm super proud of it. I don't know about you, but I, you know, I'm For really, sure, really yeah. proud of it. It's a great, great track. Yeah, this one is it was unique like for me as well. Um it was it's kind of like a leap into a new uh phase, you know, especially working with you um as somebody who um you know, like we really kind of met through music, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I and I really just admired you so much as a vocalist. Likewise. And then um and then, yeah, when it came to composing this track, like uh, we spoke about it and I said that like, I wanted to make something from scratch that mm-hmm. was kind of like 
perfectly tailored to you, or at least yeah. my version of uh, mm -hmm. tailoring yeah. uh, something. And, and so, yeah, we kind of bounced ideas about the character and whatnot, something that, you know, would obviously be kind of otherworldly, a bit, you know, larger, <laughs> larger than, than life, life. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but also something that would kind of capture and uh, emphasize kind of elements of your own personality and mm. character and things. So, you know, I think that was a cool process. I, I guess I had some ideas and, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of bounced things back and forth for a little while and... Uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I, I I'm really happy with how it came together in the end. Yeah, me too. Me too. The whole the whole the you know the characterization of it for me at first was kind of a bit scary because I was like, oh god, I've never like done anything that's like not yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? It's always just been me. I know I've played some concept characters, but never like creating this mm -hmm. this alter ego in terms of music. Um, and I think it's really symbolic actually for me because my voice doesn't always represent my personality they're kind of like a little bit different mm -hmm. so to be able to channel some of that personality that sometimes gets hidden away with everyday life into that music and the alter ego is really special um and i think mm. that that's why vocally it, it turned out like so so big because i was like i need to just get it out <laughs> yeah and obviously you rip you you know you you rip for my range which was incredible um but yeah it was it was a really nice challenge and it definitely pushed my own individual boundaries in in a, in a good way in a good way mm -hmm. yeah cool man cool i'm 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 happy uh yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a great process. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I guess uh, as we go, we'll, we'll kind of um, chat about uh, that, you know, a bit more along yeah. the way. But I'm really interested just, uh, you know, as we kind of usually do with this podcast, to just get a bit more of an idea of, you know, some of your own kind of personal story, yeah. your own journey, especially within music and whatnot. Definitely. Um, so perhaps the best place to start would be just like, would you like to give an overview of yeah. um, what you're what you're doing, all the kind of projects you're involved in, and whatnot? Definitely starting. Uh, you know, I could go right back to the beginning. <laughs> Uh, so it, yeah I mean to be honest with you music for me it, it's been around like for a long time um, it's been something that I've always been interested in um, it's something that I've I've grown up with like you like we've had many conversations about this I've been influenced mm -hmm. by people around us from a young age um, but it, it, being brutally honest and realistic it wasn't until the last I would say six years I really wanted to make something of my voice and I wanted to really you know immerse myself into that that scene that that you know energy that place and I think that you know whilst I had lessons when I was younger and stuff I never really took it seriously and I let my 20s run a bit wild and come back to it at a later date so I almost felt like I was starting a little bit later than I should have done and um I wanted to get things done fast, quickly and efficiently because I needed to make mm -hmm. up lost time. Uh, so I thought, how many projects can I take on <laughs> in like a really relatively short space of time? So there was a few that like, you know, there's lots and lots of projects that I, I kind of immersed myself in that have never seen the light of day and probably never will um, because I just needed something to kind of channel that energy to really find out where I wanted to be. And I got to the point where I was like, right, this is... This is now not working. Something's not happening. I'm working with other people a lot and I'm finding that, you know, nothing's transpiring. It's not really coming my way. Um, it's not really what I want to do. So I, I thought I'm going to just release something solo. I'm going to get that out there before I'm 30. That's what I want to do. That's my goal. That's my achievement. And I managed to do it. I did it at 29 which I was really, really happy with. Um, I worked with Adrian um, Benegas from uh, Paraguay and, and a few other really, really great people to create this song, Locked Away, that I thought I'm going to put out there and just rid myself of any inhibitions I would have carried with me throughout my early life and just think that's it, it's out, it's done, it's dusted, I've done it. And from that, funnily enough, came all of these side projects and these ventures that actually did materialise and actually did get somewhere because I think for me establishing myself as someone that has released something as a serious artist meant that actually I was attracting that into my presence as well mm. um, so then lots of things materialised from that there was Crown Solace which is the band um, which is a huge focus for me at the moment there's our project together um, there's A Better Life which is more of a down tempo chill out project um, mm. Golden World Archive you know the list is endless I've sure I've forgotten some but there's still things in the, the pipeline that are going on now there's a doom metal project which is going to be incredible um oh, wow. but yeah I, it's gonna be really really great like a uh, like a deaf doom metal project I'm um, doing a couple songs with those guys so there's lots going on 
but it just seems to have fallen into place and I don't know whether that's because of what I'm pushing out or whether that's because of my mindset being changed but the investment around music and me uh, I think the the seriousness with it that comes with it now is it is actually what's making things tick and making things mm-hmm. go on go forward um, as much as I was invested from a young age I never really had that drive and motivation to make something of it but mm-hmm. yeah it's all changed it's all changed and um, I've been working on my voice I've been working on the quality that I put out within terms of you know I don't want to say yes to everything, but also, you know, don't want to say too many no's. Um, but so, you know, getting that balance is really, really important for me. And just really, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to navigate it as best I can. I'm really, really fresh out the box in terms of years. Um, it's not been very long. Um, I've not got the most experience. So I'm just making mistakes and navigating as I go. And I'm loving every <laughs> second of it. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. That's that's really awesome. And so your approach really has um, has been mostly like you've, put yourself out there on Instagram right or at least that yeah. was your first point of call from um getting into this and just yeah. you just sing <laughs> into yeah, your phone basically <laughs> pretty much yeah. um so I, from from a well from the probably the start of the time when I thought I'm going to put myself out there to like you know be criticized be judged be exposed as you do as as, as musicians all the time yeah I thought how am I going to do this and how much thought and effort am I going to put into it? And I thought, actually, not very much. <laughs> because I think for me, being raw and being completely transparent is probably mm. the best way to start things off. That's, that was my thought process, whether it's right or wrong, yeah. I don't know. But it seems to have done all right for me. Um, so it was just random little um, little videos, like, you know, and I tagged the artist in it, and, and then they might share it, which might then make someone else come along and check my music out and stuff. And like, I just thought, I'm going to just let it grow organically. And mm-hmm. it kind of did. And I just got really addicted to posting videos of me singing in my kitchen. And I've never really stopped <laughs> doing it. Um, although I have kind of yeah. slowed down now, because I think every song that I've really wanted to cover, I've kind of done. And I've got a put some focus in the work that comes out, you know, you know, the, yeah. the proper work. Well, so, now you have proper releases. Yeah, exactly. On, so, so you've got to kind of push yeah. that in a re- weird way. But for me, it was that, that starting point was just about overcoming kind of the, the inhibitors that stopped mm-hmm. me for a lot, a long, a long time. Um, and, and, and that's what that did. You know, it was raw, it was open, it was vulnerable, you know, it was open to criticism because it wasn't edited. There was nothing in there that was fancy in terms of visuals. So it was just allowing myself to be completely and utterly transparent and, um, you know, laid bare if you like. And that made me resilient and it got me to the point where I felt like I could release my single with my own lyrics, with my own melody. Um, and yeah, I, I I'm kind of happy that it, the journey took that, kind of that kind of route um it, it, it was nice it was a nice experience and it's still going it's still going of course it's not stopped it's not making mm-hmm. it sound like it's died um, but it hasn't <laughs> it's, it's still going um but it's uh, just going to be a little bit less frequent than it was over lockdown and, and you know over times mm-hmm. like that because time really you know we haven't sure. got we haven't got loads of it sure but you're also you know you're using the platform a lot to just yeah. Uh, not only put your voice there, but your personality and, and mm. to make friends and network with people yeah. ultimately, right? And That's really important for me, networking mm-hmm. and like in, and making friends with people in the industry and like creating a community because mm-hmm. there is there is not enough of it, in my opinion, like especially in, in the UK, like a lot of it mm. is Europe and, and you know, we, we're obviously over here in, in the UK. I've got another couple of really good friends that are operating in the same scene as us in the UK. And I think mm-hmm. that, we, we kind of need that over here to get that live music scene back again um, mm. to a degree. Whether I'll be part of that, I don't know. But at least there's a community there that will, you know, want to be part of that. And I think that's super, super important my, in, in my perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. But of course, the, the nature of social media and the internet means that, you know, we can be in contact with all the time. people all over the world. <laughs> Globally, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is also really important um, mm-hmm. because I don't think there's ever been an age really is there where we've had this, like especially oh, from a musician sure. point of view. Like this is completely, you know, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, you know, the argument is there that the market is so exhausted in terms of there's so many different people, you know, getting out there. It's oversaturated for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But also it's everyone's got kind of an equal opportunity everyone's got Absolutely, the opportunity yeah. to be to be represented to be you know be, to be found uh, to be discovered and i think that that is extremely mm-hmm. important you know it's so so important nowadays yeah 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 exactly there's no uh, it's not like as harshly gatekept as you mm-hmm, say it's mm-hmm. equality of opportunity yeah it's just yeah. very noisy so you know it's about differentiating yourself yeah. Yeah, definitely. We could go. We could talk about this. We could talk about Spotify, and we could talk about all those oh, yeah. different things. You know, and I think it's so important to be like real and 
to understand why things are there and what mm-hmm. you have to do as an artist to make it work rather than trying to change things that aren't working all the time. <laughs> of course, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, it. Definitely, yeah. You can take responsibility for, for yourself, right? That's something you can change. Exactly. Your environment is yeah. a bit more difficult. Yeah, you know, we've seen we've seen so many great things like co- coffee, coffee, however you want to pronounce it, um, Patreon. Oh, is right, really yeah. Thing. yeah. All of those sorts of things that like, as artists and musicians that like, we can use to kind of enhance ourselves. Yeah, you know, I haven't got involved in that yet, but I'm also not moaning about it. So it's kind of like, you know, where do you go with it? Um, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I think there's, there's so many opportunities and Instagram for me like you said is, is definitely the first port of call um, because it just has that access to those so many people mm-hmm. globally yeah yeah and 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 ultimately that's where most of your kind of manifest um, or the uh, your opportunities and stuff yeah. have manifested themselves in mm-hmm. the I mean I can speak from my own experience that we would have just come across each other on Instagram and I would have yeah. just seen you as you say being raw just singing and being yeah. like wow this yeah. guy's voice is awesome yeah. as well you know got enough of your personality to think yeah. okay this guy's approachable yeah. send him a message and get talking and then here we are now with are now. official release you know exactly writing this thing together so yeah. and yeah. i guess that's how a lot of your things have, have come mm-hmm. about and i'm just kind of thinking from the perspective of if anybody is in a similar position you know mm-hmm. uh, perhaps if someone is a singer or a musician and they don't really know where to start then mm-hmm. That's a pretty good way to do it. Just yeah. put yourself out there and just <laughs> yeah, be accessible. You know? Be accessible. Yeah, and and don't. I, I think the thing is as well is it. it I had this conversation with another friend a little while back. At, Mm-hmm. have a standard of work that you want to kind of put out there when you put it out there properly like whatever you put on Instagram you know your photos your videos mm-hmm. let it just be you let it, you know be yeah. really really honest really really open that standard of work doesn't have to match up to the recordings that you put onto Spotify onto YouTube onto mm-hmm. iTunes it doesn't have to be anything of the sort um, and I think that that's really important like everybody gets hung up on perfection nowadays and a mm. lot of the times perfection's not real and it doesn't translate very well so just be organic, mm. be completely organic and raw and just, you know, don't stop. Post twice a day if you need to. Someone's going to notice it. Someone's going to love it um, yeah. and it will lead somewhere, definitely. Oh, that's great advice, yeah. Mm. And especially if you're kind of making the effort to go out and reach people and, and support mm. people as well and kind of giving out what you would like to receive back. Yeah. And it, that was another thing that um, even just also impressed me about you when we when we first got to know one another is I started doing the same thing and you know, trying to find a lot more uh, artists and stuff within the community. Mm-hmm. And so often I would like find some cool new band and they might not even have many followers, you know, and I'd be excited to find them. And I go to their Instagram and Pete Rawcliffe is already following them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, already there. Yeah, it's already yeah. there. Yeah. And that happened so many times. And I was yeah. thinking, this guy is everywhere. Uh, he's man. just everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think, yeah, like, you know, I, I don't know what about you, but like music and like newness excites me because yeah, me too, I think yeah. some of the formulas that we see, especially in the symphonic metal industry at the moment and even the mm. metal industry as a whole, are so repeated. Like when something comes mm. through that's new and fresh, I'm like, this, yeah, this is good. Like, come on, let's see some more of that. Like, let's mm-hmm. champion these people people and big them up and like make them want to create because you know I'm, I'm nobody like you know I'm, I'm not I'm not anybody but but it's for me to get excited about someone else's work and mm-hmm. then feel my excitement is like gold I love that I think that's yeah, absolutely yeah. brilliant like, I'm so happy that I can give that to somebody else be mm-hmm. it whoever you are you know it, you, you don't have to be someone to, to 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 let someone feel your excitement for something and to, to allow them to feel championed by you so I think that it's so nice to see these small bands these like tryout bands just coming up with something new coming up with something different mm-hmm. and change hopefully the course of the genre into something that's a little bit more fresh a little bit more new because we kind of need it <laughs> yeah I'm with yeah. you man I'm mm-hmm. with you and it is humbling when you realize just how many like incredible like talented musicians are out there i mean yeah. it's yeah. it's it's pretty mad i mean it's good for the ego it's really good for the ego definitely like, yeah, i yeah. think that sometimes I, i'm not a fan of ego like as you know you'll know uh-huh. if you're on my instagram like, it rolls me out the wrong way um you do need some of the stage presence, but that's a totally different conversation. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, like when you see all of these talented people, some of them, you know, not virtually unknown, like nobody, yeah. nobody knows of them, never released anything. It puts things into perspective. Like actually, sometimes we are where we are for graft. 
and mm-hmm. there's an element of luck with that as well and yeah that, that you know that's that's the that's the truth of it all and there's mm-hmm. so many talented people that it does put you back down to earth and i like that i think it's yeah. really really grounding i i agree man mm. I, I i agree i'm definitely someone that like growing up i like, had been in my head quite a lot and so to 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 go and see that like uh yeah it's definitely very humbling man like you if you go on like Bandcamp or something even yeah. not even instagram you'll see that there's so many amazing records out mm-hmm. there and they the person might not even have an instagram or if they yeah. do it's got 10 followers on it yeah or something. right it's crazy yeah. isn't and it? it sounds it sounds insane and 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 you're yeah, yeah. It, as you say really yeah. really <laughs> i'd like to have a chat with them about their marketing though i mean come on like we can, we can we can say your talent is good but you need to up your marketing game <laughs> that, yeah that's, <laughs> that's all i do yeah yeah <laughs> I, yeah, I have uh, of both. <laughs> exactly, man. I have yeah. I have the same thing. But as you say, that is that is ultimately what um, is required for success. Is yeah. like it's not just about being talented. Like mm-hmm. you, you do have to take responsibility for these uh, other aspects. Yeah. Otherwise, you're leaving it yeah. very up to you know. Yeah, yeah. External you are. like lottery basically which is not good you know and, no. and it's a lot of the times you see people you know i've been pushing out music for like 10 or 15 years not got me anywhere yeah but why yeah. like challenge yourself why? why what are you doing why are you repeating the same process over and over mm-hmm. and over and over again for the same results and i think that yeah. that's gonna you know it's never about it's never about dissing someone's talent because mm-hmm. everybody is in their own right something you know like you know what what, what i don't yeah. like you might like what you don't like i might like and mm-hmm. that's absolutely fine to have that but when it comes to people wanting to get it out there and then getting frustrated because they haven't, I think that that's when there's an element of like, right, come on, get your ass in gear. We need to get this sorted. You, you know, yeah. and you work with those people and you think actually, you know, we can really do something different there. Um, that's where the frustration comes from most most of the mm. time, I think, especially for the, seeing these bands that we were talking about, these startup bands, not getting the views that they deserve. You kind of mm. want to weigh in and be like, right, what are you doing to change this? Like, <laughs> are you doing yeah. this? And that's kind of what you're doing, isn't it? I guess in some degree. Yeah. 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 To some degree. I mean, I think as you say, it kind of comes to that. Like that's that's the power of sort of community because mm-hmm. at the very least we can encourage one another. Absolutely. You know, because as you say, if that person has made an amazing record and put it out to no one. Yeah. You know then maybe maybe they're just like oh well you know i'm just doing it for myself and okay cool That's fair but if you if you can like make that effort to reach out to that person and tell them how much you mm-hmm. liked that effort chances are that's going to mean a lot to that person yeah. and it may even you know um if you know perhaps at least contribute to mm-hmm. um you know inspiration to get a little bit more momentum with it you know yeah. to to really? p- to either like put it out to more people help kind of market it or to just make more of it you know yeah and i think that 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 costs nothing you know just just that kind of sense of encouragement that we can all give one another yeah Uh, you know that's that's the that's that's um the best place to start and then of course from there like yeah we can help each other a bit more hands-on in terms of like look you need some sense of marketing here you need some structure (laughs) or a plan you need a website, whatever it is, you know. Yeah. What's your so, USP? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, okay. Talk, talking of USP, though. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll segue in because, um, like, I would say that you have a fairly distinctive USP as somebody who is just rawly sp- singing into their microphone, in that your voice yeah. is really quite unique, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you uh, you'd call it like a countertenor kind of profile, right? Yeah, is that um, how you describe it? Most uh, it, for, for ease, um, it, it's yeah. a counter tenor, which is the most um, accessible form of what I do. Uh, I yeah. probably, if you were going to deep classification, would be a sopranista, which is a male sopranist, okay. um, which cool. has a more female-like quality to mm-hmm. the counter tenor. So you will hear a lot of people in popular music use counter tenor falsetto. BGs, for example, like a really big name, yep. um, yeah. and they've got kind of that twang, that small twang to it. Whereas my voice is much more soprano quality in terms of like it sounds so, more like a female. Yeah, you literally yeah. sing like so. A lot of what you sing is you know like the big kind of female metal singers, yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah. that's that's like so much of your repertoire, right? Massively. And then of course, literally like soprano opera parts and, and yeah, things like yeah, that yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah. 
it's really quite uh, distinctive, of course. Like, I mean, I think that even a counter-tenor profile is considered, like, you know, the rarest of those main... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, types, it's, it's one of the but... oldest, but um, it, its decline in popular music... It's mainly because nobody really writes for it anymore in terms of mm-hmm. um, in terms of classical music. Like a lot of it was pre- prevalent in the Baroque era, um, even mm-hmm. before then with the castrati and things like that. So it has been sure. around for a long, long time. Um, but and and it is used a lot in R and B. So you, like you'll find a lot of R and B singers go up and do some runs and riffs in their falsetto. Mm-hmm. But it's never really been any anyone in popular music i might be corrected here that actually does sure. it continually um yeah klaus nomi maybe going back in the day uh yeah klaus it's, it's more like dipping in and out i agree like i i would i kind of feel like i'm not an expert necessarily in this area mm-hmm. but like with r&b you know if a male singer kind of goes into that register it's more just the fact that they're an amazing singer and and they're just you know being very yeah. tasteful with some falsetto yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean and mm-hmm. that's more like a a very um like a good Stylistic use of falsetto voice. yeah rather than i mean what you do is something that i think that i've never seen before and probably most people that come across you have never seen before which yeah. is like yeah you're literally singing like the kind of profile of you yeah. know a, a soprano F- female yeah. singer mm-hmm. um and yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah. it's funny <laughs> i remember reading one of the comments for the crown solace video horizons actually yeah the one put in the bottom of it they said i actually don't believe that this is a guy singing this is definitely a female soprano with a guy in the video and i was like yeah. i promise you it isn't like i swear to you it isn't um but i can understand it like i totally totally yeah. get it like because it does it, it is hard when you when you turn off all the visuals it is hard yeah. to kind of create a, a point of difference between a male and a female sopranist like there's there's not much telling you know it's, it's all to do with the mm-hmm. range um, with, with yeah, your I voice it. i would yeah. especially say so like yeah i mean i'll take that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Thank well you. I, I think i think it's yeah i think yeah. it's fantastic um mm. like yeah as you say it's just it it, it has definitely has that usp to it mm. because you know it, it certainly helps that differentiation like yeah you, when you are just singing in your kitchen yeah you know it's still something you don't see every day mm-hmm. and you know has that i mean again like i'm not trying to you know blow too much smoke here but like <laughs> not only do you have this Getting like range <laughs> <laughs> you obviously you have this range and this vocal profile but you also do it like exceptionally well Thank you. like i mean i'm and i'm sure that uh you know many colleagues and you know male and female yeah. <laughs> alike you know compliment you and appreciate you on your your technique and and i mean that is something that you're also uh very knowledgeable about and de- and about about like in terms of vocal like the the, the technique yeah. of it all yeah i'm definitely a bit of a voice nerd um definitely like i like to understand how it all works like the scientific um side of things uh i've been training like for the like the last six years i've been really invested in this i've been training non-stop mm. like i have always where i can i've gone gone to see someone once a week or you know it has reduced slightly nice. with time because life goes mm. on um but you know i've always kept on top of my studies there's always been things that i record even just for myself just to look back and think oh that could have been done differently you're a bit tight on that you didn't have enough support there like resonance mm-hmm. was bad and then i'll go back and try and change it and if i can't change it myself then i'll go to someone who can help me because i think that you know you get one instrument with a singer mm-hmm. uh, and if you start to ruin it especially because my voice is unnaturally high let's be honest mm-hmm. like and, and singing up there all the time had take, takes its toll you know like these high notes these power metal sounds you could really do some damage if you don't do it properly so i think no look after yourself and, and learn more <laughs> which mm-hmm. is kind of where i am yeah so thank you for that i do appreciate it it's um it's really kind of you to say no oh, it's yeah. a pleasure man i mean i've I've learned things about the voice from you i mean <laughs> i mean like uh <laughs> yeah. yeah i would say that you're definitely one of the most no- knowledgeable people in this department that i know so i it's it's really interesting mm. um and and so has you have you always sung like that? You like so we're going back. You you've mentioned a lot about how okay, really, it's just the last years you've had essentially like the yeah. the confidence to put yourself out or yeah, I say know, so. Yeah, I think I've always know. sung. Uh, when I was younger, I I listened to loads of loads of music that my mum used to play. So we had Meatloaf, mm. we had Kate Bush, we had Iron Maiden. Like she was nice. such a big music fan. Like and she introduced me some of the best. And I you know I always sure, have that yeah. to thank for her. Um, and um, 
I remember like singing along to a lot of them, like even Whitney Houston, for example. Mm. And I'd always like be able to hit these 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 high notes, even when I was like really young. And so this is like unbroken. Voice. Yeah, unbroken yeah. voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then my voice started to break, and I just realised I could kind of sing through that that process. And it wasn't until one New Year's Eve that I was singing "River Deep Mountain High" by Celine Dion, and I must have been about what. Six, fifteen, sixteen, and I just hit the high notes. I was like, "Hang on a minute, what's this about?" Like, <laughs> how did I get up there? But like, it was really high, and my voice had obviously broke by that point. Yeah, and um, and I, I just thought, okay, right. So keep working on this, keep working on this, and and I did, I did, and I carried on going. And I don't think I'd ever, I never really developed my chest voice at all. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do use it now. Like, I've obviously had to go back to it. Um over the last few years I've had to develop it because it's part mm -hmm. of that you know that scale um but I don't I don't really use it my the breath so you're singing like, in falsetto yeah. basically all the time like the whole the time. time yeah yeah um because it can it can extend down quite low I think there was one note in our track together that I did yeah. in chest voice where I dropped down ever so slightly yeah. um but because it is quite a big range I lazily or not I just don't drop into it very often um mm -hmm. I probably should for clarity and tone um, but yeah, I'll work on that at some point. <laughs> For sure. But I think, yeah. I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that you told me that like you actually wanted to do that, like on the, on this song, yeah. And that like that you know because how how I'd maybe suggested it would have been for you to go higher on that part, like you do, I think later in the song as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. like you said to me, like I think that it could be really cool if I actually yeah. drop on mm -hmm. this part. Yeah, and I'll yeah. go into my chest voice, and I don't know how it's gonna be or whatever. And I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, but yeah, I think that was really cool because again, it just showed like, you know, I suppose when we were working on this track, like, um, I, yeah, I definitely came to you with, as you kind of mentioned, like, I, I wanted to sort of get the most out of your voice. I wanted to really just like put it to work in the kind of spectrum of. Uh, you know what what it could do and that's why we kind of spoke about like your range and we mm -hmm. had conversations about that so i could try and kind of accommodate for that in writing it yeah and so you you're able to almost play like different characters within the same song yeah. and that obviously kind of comes together in the character who is almost like a yeah an amalgamation in that of sense everything. as well <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely <laughs> i think that's what i absolutely loved about this it's because I could, the, the second you sent it over, I could hear there was three different parts. There was like that soft mm. awakening that was kind of like lower voice, but very like mm. clean, um, that then drifted into that more classical bright sound. Um, and then it was kind of a bit angry. Like there was some like, yeah, I have a, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm up now, I'm alive. And then it kind yeah. of just soared from that on the classical part. Um, but you, you know, you writ, you writ it so well that there was enough scope to be able to put so much in there that could rep represent so many different types of this character's personality. Mm -hmm. And I think that I had to do something with my voice to highlight each part of that. Um, so yeah, it, you know, I think it's a testimony to your skills there, absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Like if it wasn't so diverse <laughs> oh, in the way that it was written, <laughs> um, you know, it wouldn't have been able to happen like that. But I, it was really weird because when you sent it over and I'd, and I'd sat down with it, I knew exactly what your vision was, like as if we were connected on the whole thing. Like oh, I knew cool. what you were kind of looking for and I just went with it and yeah, we were both really happy, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you saying that, but like, yeah, obviously it's ultimately like, I really just wanted to create a platform mm. for, for your, Certainly did you that. know, <laughs> your skills. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, I, I love how that came about and yeah, yeah I wanted to, I, I knew that when I went in with it, when I sat down trying to think, what do I want to do with mm -hmm. this piece? Um, I definitely thought, okay, let's start with a, you know, much more kind of, um, you know, a, a mellower kind of intro to it. Because I noticed that kind of um, theme going in, in some of your other music as well, and, and especially like Locked Away being yeah. your big solo release. Mm -hmm. um, obviously that doesn't necessarily get as kind of uh, heavy, yeah, but mm -hmm. it does It does just like have this momentum that carries yeah. through it, you know, it starts mm -hmm. much like, you know, um, yeah, much more kind of inward yeah. and then just kind of gets bigger and just more grows. and more comes out and the yeah. arrangement kind of, mm -hmm. yeah, boom. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really interested actually as well. I don't know if you, if you want to talk about it, but um, Go for it. I, I was really intrigued about the, the lyrics and stuff 
for that song because I feel yeah. like that it's clearly very kind of linked with, as you say, your your journey, mm-hmm. as you've kind of mentioned here, and how that was your kind of big step into breaking out into music yeah. and stuff. So. I'll, <laughs> yeah so yeah that was kind of um that was me laying a lot better um mm-hmm. in terms of in terms of my my life i guess um it was really weird because locked away was released in lockdown had absolutely mm-hmm. nothing to do with that however i didn't think about that uh, until after oh is everyone's like, about, about being locked in no it's not <laughs> funnily enough i don't want to write about the i didn't think i didn't think yeah, that, yeah um, okay. but, uh, um but i get why people might think that because of the, the sure. timings and the synchronicities mm-hmm. um but yeah it is a story um it's a story of me and my life um and i think um i grew up in a small town um in cornwall um i grew up very self-conscious of myself, probably my sexuality, just gonna get that one out there because it's pretty hard for me to say. Um, and I find that actually um, over the years, as, as I moved away, as I grew as an individual, I was able to step into my power and, and you know, be a bit more, um, a, a bit more authentic, shall we say. But mm-hmm. back then when I was, you know, 21, 22, um, even before then, I struggled because I just didn't really know how I would be accepted, you know, how this voice that I had that was very feminine, very um, female, you know, how was I ever going to get that out there? Because I wasn't even comfortable in my own skin, let alone like having this voice. And it was always been a trigger point for me. So um, I kind of like lived in the shadows a little bit. Um, and I remember this one, this one, one section of that song about me phoning my mum um, <laughs> every morning at one o'clock in the morning i lived in plymouth at the time which is a place in in devon and um she was in in the village at home and i used to phone her up just cry for about two hours um because i just didn't know what was going on in my life i didn't know what was going on in my brain i didn't know what was happening and she would just sit there and she would just listen and she would tell me it was all right and she'd say that she was going to come and collect me but i didn't want her to because i also couldn't be pulled out of that space that kind of made me feel a little bit more free it was like a massive nightmare it was a huge nightmare um but she she kind of helped me with that and she got over 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 that part of my life with me with in that you know in that moment um and then of course i found myself like and i found i could be a little bit more authentic but with that comes the peter pan syndrome well my youth was kind of lost you know i, I was now 22 years old and i was able to be comfortable in my own skin and um i had so much that i wanted to do and so much that i i, I needed to do so I kind of went a little bit wild um mm recreational drugs took a part of my life um i was drinking a lot i was going out a lot i was just being completely debaucherous if you like and um mm. and and, she, and, and my mum broke down from it and the person that had been there and supported me through this crazy time in my own life and had been there and given me everything i'd kind of just taken away that from her because i'd you know ruined her vision of me and and the way that i was and you know she 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 didn't yeah she didn't take it very nicely of course uh, and and it was hard and it was a real really difficult journey um so then i moved away again further away <laughs> um mm. but only you know an hour and a bit in the grand scheme of things and thought now this is it now you need to get yourself sorted so I finally become comfortable with my own skin um i finally become uh, to a point where i felt like i could go and get my voice out there because I was comfortable enough and I had my family and my support around me um, and all those all those things that I was doing that was, was no good to my health were gone so I went to see Louisa who you know I need to mention alongside of this because she's a huge huge part of this journey um, and she she taught me to be accepting of my voice and the way that it was and she taught me that it was okay to sound like that and it wasn't anything to do with masculine or feminine and it was just completely normal and yeah she is a big reason and a big part of why I am where I am right now. And, you know, if anybody's looking for a vocal coach that will champion you and will support you and will be this voice of wisdom, it's her. <laughs> like, she is incredible. And, um, yeah, you know, that's kind of where that song comes from. It's about being locked in so many different parts of, of, of life um, through so many different reasons. And if you just step outside and, and, and reflect back on it and realize actually if you'd have not locked yourself away for so long, you could have had something that was so special. 
Um, so it's kind of a bit of wasted time, which is a big theme in, 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 in a lot of my songs. Um, I, I think that that's really important. And, and if I'm talking to anybody that's younger than me, there's something that I'd always say, and it's like, you know, take control of your time because it's, it's precious and it's so, so important. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where that comes from. So sorry, I went a bit deep on that. No, but I, wow. I, like I had to. <laughs> no, I, thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, that's an amazing story and and it's something that i'm sure a lot of people can uh relate to and therefore mm -hmm. it's really inspiring to he hear you talk about that man so i'm I'm, I'm really happy that yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've never spoken about this lyric so um yeah i i I, I, talk about that. I just found i knew that that song uh carried a lot of weight yeah. you know what i mean I, I you can feel that when you listen to it and um and and yeah every every time that i've listened to that i've i've, I've really thought mm -hmm about that and and that's yeah been one thing that i've been really curious to talk about that yeah. is not necessarily the kind of thing i would just like text you on instagram about that's you know? cool yeah like, no, it's good it's nice so, conversation mm -hmm. yeah I, i'm yeah that, that's really cool i'm sure that uh people will appreciate getting that context and probably enjoy the song even more because of yeah it. i i hope so um because yeah it does it yeah it does resonate and i'm really proud of those lyrics like as much as they it took it took me you know just going into the process a little bit it took me literally half an hour to write those lyrics because mm. they are years of, of things that i've needed to get off my chest and i think that that's mm. when you when you know as a musician you'll feel the same like when you have something that you need to say it comes so quickly and so organically and so freely that you know it's right i think when you when you get a song and you're struggling to to, to write something or you're struggling to put pen to paper yeah there's you can have a blockage but you've got to ask yourself do you really want to write about this like is mm. that something that you really want to talk about because if you're not inspired to write from the heart it doesn't really make make for good music in personal mm -hmm. opinion <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah i mean it's 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 that thing again isn't it about sort of authenticity like yeah. are you really mm -hmm. kind of being this are you really feeling yeah yeah definitely. what what you're what you're writing about and and people will always pick that up yeah 100%. so mm -hmm. it becomes like embedded in the music in that way and yeah i yeah i that, that's fantastic i mean i think that i've you've mentioned before um th there's a video that we've obviously made where we actually talk about um creating yeah the arcane mm -hmm. muse and that's not come out yet that's going to be out that's soon uh, after this podcast so that's a little uh something to look Te forward to teaser <laughs> um and and i think that in that you say a similar thing about uh how the lyrics kind of came to you quite yeah. quickly and quite naturally mm -hmm. and so do you feel like uh, that um that is the kind of approach that you go to like you sort of try and just kind of get into the the mood and the vibe and then it's just kind of stream of consciousness like yeah it's so when when you sent me that song in, in particular um mm. I, I just sit with it first off and think, okay, right, so what, what's the melody gonna sound like? And for me, there was like a lot of growth within the vocal melody. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it was quite small, then it got pretty angry, then it got quite melodic and soaring and high and crazy. So I thought, well, how, how can we tell this story of this character? And by the way, fantasy and reading and, you know, fantasy mm. games and books is something that I'm so invested in. So for me, like, this is a story that we need to tell, you know, like mm. it's, it's incredible to have that platform to be able to tell that sort of story. Um, so I thought, how are we gonna introduce this character through vo through the voice? So, you know, to, to represent how well you've done it through the music and it just come automatically it comes so naturally and organically mm. you know i wanted to create the lyrics for the first part of the song which was explaining what the character was or you know how the character operates and it was the voice of everything you know just the, the sounds in, in your day to day the sounds internally the sounds of the forest of the sea of the snow of the earth and then it kind of like got to the point where i was like right i'm back again i'm awake i'm re-entering re i'm reintroducing myself into this world into the universe that you've created and then the rest of it was just basically saying here i am this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna show off oh, hit the microphone i'm gonna show <laughs> off to you now you know i'm gonna show you my voice and i think that that was how i envisaged it and once mm -hmm. i had that timeline of events and how how we wanted this, this the start of the song to, to to begin in the journey and how we wanted the end of the song to finish it the, the lyrics just come automatically and mm. I, I i love those lyrics like, i don't know about you like, yeah. i think they're really oh, cool. sure. yeah then they're really yeah. nice um so yeah it, that that's that that one come 
super super easy the melody was super super easy i remember you really pushing me to do that sustained high note at the end uh, yeah i'm we so had... glad you did that like I'm <laughs> so so glad you did that because that oh, makes yeah. the song like <laughs> uh, me too it's, it's just like i remember we get went on a, a few back and forth about we that did. Yeah, as yeah, well yeah, yeah. and and you 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 actually like sent me pretty much the whole song without it yeah i did yeah yeah <laughs> and you were like I'm but like it. my voice is just yeah i just you know I tried yeah. it, but yeah. you know, maybe, yeah. maybe another yeah. time, uh -huh. and then like, mm. kind of avoiding it, and like, <laughs> are we gonna, are we gonna, ha are we gonna have to do that? Maybe yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, definitely. But, I'm so glad you 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 pushed it though, because it, it, yeah, I know. I, I, I knew, knew that you could do it. Easy, so. we? I think we we took it up to like the B, and I was like, oh god, that's really high to sustain, and. The funny we thing were about, trying to work it out. Yeah. yeah, the funny thing about people's ranges is like sometimes at the top. It, it, it's not as like weighty but that note needed to be really weighty yeah so yeah, we yeah. kind of harmonized with it and yeah I, it worked perfectly so your vision was bang on the nose there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the whole process yeah. i think was quite collaborative in terms of like you know we did bounce back and forward we did talk about it but there was also enough freedom from your end for me that i could really make it my own and i think that mm. was really cherished um so yeah it was great it was really really good oh uh, well thank you yeah i, I definitely had that in intention with it like i wanted to create the the canvas basically um and that yeah i wanted to give you a lot of space to do that and and as you said like for me it was actually very important to allow you to have a lot of creative mm -hmm. space to do your own thing with it because a lot of a lot of what i'm trying to do here and especially with this character is like you know it's not just a character that we kind of manufacture and then get somebody to play you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 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 really a lot more organic than that. At least with, with this character, it certainly was. And I really wanted you to, for us to co-create a character that you would then breathe life yeah. into. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and so, it's another reason why I was so interested in Locked Away and and your mm -hmm. lyrics there. Yeah. Um, because that's clearly a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of raw emotion mm -hmm. in that. Mm -hmm. And with what we're doing, it's obviously more fantasy. And as you yeah. said, you obviously have a lot of interest in fantasy, which is another part of why we were uh -huh. doing this project yeah, in this definitely. way. You know, I know you read a lot of fantasy kind of novels and, and video games and stuff. So, um, so yeah, of course it has these fantastical themes and it's mm -hmm. this like magical, angelic kind of character who is like combined of all the elements and, and all of these things. But at the same time, there is still emotion there, right? And there is yeah. still meaning to what mm -hmm. is being said. Yeah. And I, I couldn't help but find just at least some parallels between the themes that are in this song and the themes that you have in Locked Away. Totally agree. Totally, totally agree. I think for me, I think the this side of, of, of me that has been suppressed, that has been kind of like, you know... It, in my in my day-to-day -day life i think i'm very and i hate these terms i think mm -hmm. i'm very kind of like average like i don't have anything like in terms of um like i'm not extrovert i'm not like over the top but in deep down inside of me that's kind of what i like like i want to be like yeah. that i want to walk around flamboyantly i want to kind of be that person but it just doesn't sit in with my life and that's okay like that's that's absolutely sure, yeah. fine um but it has been suppressed it has been um a part of me that maybe i've like kind of left to the wayside and i've left behind closed doors so this journey that we're on now and, and introducing uh, urania is like actually extremely symbolic of this part of me coming out because it allows me to be um metaphorically uh in, in that fantasy world <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, being reawakened yeah. of being like introduced and i think that it's it's absolutely um part of my core as well you know it's not just mm -hmm random words that are written down to make a nice story. It is emotional, it is connected, mm. um, and, it, and it is a an extension of me in one way or another, without a doubt. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's 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 amazing, man. And again, like, as you said, we kind of created this song and it almost felt like we were already kind of uh, connected in that way. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I definitely got that impression. And, me too. Um, and yeah, that, that was certainly a big part of it because, I think there's maybe sometimes misconception with, I think a lot of people see music as it's either like really serious and emotional yeah. and mm -hmm. meaningful, or it's just kind of maybe it's nonsense or, or yeah. theater or whatever. And 
you know, so some people cannot stand this music that they might consider kind of gimmicky, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I think that they're kind of they yeah they're missing something yeah, <laughs> really important if they see it that way. It's mm -hmm. not just because you might be using story and like metaphor essentially mm -hmm. does does not mean that as you say it's just random words kind yeah. of to create a, a pretty picture. I, yeah. I can't speak for every, everybody necessarily. Perhaps I agree. Some like I that, but yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know the way I kind of th I think about it a lot like. Um, mythology you know yeah. and and like archetypes and and these kind of stories like those are in a way almost like the most profound profoundly meaningful things yeah. that exist 100%. <laughs> yeah you know they add this um you know this enrichment to your life in terms of like you know your 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 history you know and your heritage and and also like how how you see and perceive different things there's a lot of um philosophy in those in those myths and those and those mm -hmm. teachings and i think it's really important to you know to get them across but you know you talk about like gimmicks and stuff which is really interesting because i always i always think of like bat out of hell and stuff like that and um and like yeah. a luma shade from from all recently with um fabian oh, cool. from oh, you know they created like this mm -hmm. world as well that and people people actually surprisingly really like get involved with it don't they and they, they really love it so as much as i do think that there is those people out there that think it's a gimmick i think for most part if the quality is good and the message is good they tend to absorb mm. it and they tend to love it <laughs> uh, and yeah. oh, so i'll just move the table there i hope it didn't go too much uh, and right. they um and they uh, you know and they do they do see those those messages hidden in there like the mythology and the things like that and you know and mm. they get involved in that world I think it's super. I think it's really, really good. It does. Def there's definitely a place for it in life, in you know, music in life everywhere. Well, as you say, um, as you say, like people, people play video games, right? Yeah. The video game yeah. industry makes a lot more than the music industry does. Massively, like yeah. music and film combined, even. Yeah. But you know, but yeah, films and stuff are, are always relevant, and especially if you take ones that are kind of topically relevant, like a big franchise like Star Wars, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's all just, uh, it's all just mythology reinstated. Yeah. These archetypal stories that yeah. resonate with us on such a fundamental level as like a species, you know, yeah, no matter where, absolutely. where you're from. Yeah. And yeah, yeah I felt, I just felt like I kind of wanted to, uh, enlighten, like shed some light on that in mm -hmm. relation to the fact that we're talking about the lyrics with this song, just how like, yes, there's a nice, fictional kind of fantasy story mm -hmm. going on here and it's all kind of good fun you know mm -hmm. yeah but but it's also really kind of somewhat embedded with all the kind of deep meaning and emotional mm -hmm. um factors that we naturally have as artists and you can see that kind of parallel between you being you mm -hmm. and and being raw and creating a song like locked away and then you being urania and mm -hmm. being Larger than, larger life. than life and 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 as you say that that kind of like bit that's inside of you that's allowed to just like yeah go go full run whack. free <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah totally agree mm-hmm so yeah, yeah. that really, yeah really nice it's nice to have that outlet and it's nice to have that that vision and not be you know 100 percent vapid like and you know there is there is there is more to it than that and i think that mm -hmm. that is the message here isn't it and you, you know, who knows? Like it might cross over with some of the other artists in the universe. There might be some play on that in terms of the mythology. You know, you never know what's mm -hmm. around the corner, do you? <laughs> yeah, we'll just yeah. see. We'll, we'll yeah, see how it definitely. all pans out. Yeah. But again, I just, I, I love that organic element mm -hmm. to it. You mm -hmm. know, as as if like this, this character is like you in a parallel universe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish I could fly. I wish I had that hair. Like, <laughs> you know, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, I don't know how yeah. I would get, to, get to work in the morning, but um, you know, it would be it would be definitely something to try. <laughs> yeah, quite spectacular. I yeah. mean, you know, again, I'm not quite sure I've ever seen a, a, a hairdo like that, at least in uh, at least in the flesh, <laughs> yeah. and especially with yeah. all the sparkly magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you know? we'll leave that for uh, for our imagination. <laughs> Do, do you know, um, I don't think we actually mentioned this, but funnily enough, the hairdo, yeah. um, there was a reference that Maria found when she was working on the initial concept for it yeah. uh, that was a really cool artwork um, that was based on like the Queen of the Night from uh, oh, the Magic Flute. Really? Uh, okay. Mozart yeah. opera. Right. And obviously, I mean, I'm sure that you're aware, but like that's obviously such a really cool opera character yeah. mm -hmm. especially in terms of this kind of 
uh, fairy tale kind of yeah. mm -hmm. uh, yeah. style. And it was just like, it, so it was this concept of the queen of the night. Um, but like, yeah, she just looked epic and she had this long flowing hair that was upwards and it also had like magic and stuff in, in yeah. entwined in it and obviously you know i mean that that uh, it has a very uh famous aria that you know people yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna sing sing that right now but people would definitely yeah. anybody would recognize yeah. that one if they yeah. heard it yeah um and yeah i just felt like you know th that seemed to kind of fit quite well with what we're doing yeah. with this character as well so Definitely. that was where the hair came from this uh yeah. this cool i really uh, see that, now you said that. yeah artwork. i really see that there was um there's, there's been so many interpretations of that character and um, obviously mm. like i don't know i don't know i can't i don't know how the original was played out don't like, don't quote me mm. on it but there's the opera itself has been revisited so many times and redone mm -hmm. and a lot of them are in fantasy settings yeah i mean there's been a few like to do with the war and stuff but even then she comes out and she's like this beacon of something within the war so it's really that's that makes a lot of sense that yeah yeah really really does and that aria is yeah I, I, can never, I can't sing that <laughs> just just FYI. can you not sing that for sure um I mean... so that goes up to the staccato coloratura goes up to um an F, an F sharp, maybe um, in in the sixth octave, and on my highest Sounds note would familiar. be the E. Yeah, so it would I, I could only do an E through vocalization and warm up a C on paper, so that would be way too high for me. If you took it down, I could do it, yeah. but it'd have to be transposed. Like a tone. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Well, maybe you'll reach it. It's like I feel like that's within reach with a bit more. Uh... When when we get when when men get to thirty, uh, here you go, vocal nerds style. There's a there's a mm. correct. I'm going to probably be corrected by someone. There's there's a piece of cartilage there that um, goes hard. Um, mm. So the ma a man's range never really increases once he's hit thirty, even if he continues to to practice. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm kind of done now. Which is a shame. <laughs> I'd like to be able to get up to that F. Just a tone. Um, of yeah, them, just yeah. one. You know what I mean? But you know, never mind. I'm, I've still got enough, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nah. yeah. I mean, I it just uh, it's kind of a little bit of a di divulge here. But as you were talking about that opera and different different versions, I mean, I think. Mm -hmm. It was originally set in this like fantasy kind oh, of was it? fairy tale, uh, or, okay. or was it not? But I don't know. I can't. I can't remember the original kind of production for it. Um, because I, I mean, it's about a magical flute, right? Flute, and the Queen yeah. of the Night is like a kind of fairy tale bad I guy. So it yeah, it was. There, there was a. There's a couple of. There's like a, um, a few renditions, like I said, about a war. Like so, it was like very like mm. um, Hitler's war and stuff like that. And then yeah. the Queen come along, and that was a, that was a bit boring, a bit dull um mm. but the ones that i've seen have been based in woods yeah like in the woods like with the, yeah. the magical creatures and stuff and like the crazy costumes but opera is kind of like that like, i went to see yeah. um i went to see puccini what was it i can't remember what it was now uh no um oh god what was it umbaldi i've forgotten anyway madam butterfly Madam Butterfly, that's the one, yeah. 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 Um, so I went to see Madam Butterfly not so long ago, and they had these crazy, like, do you remember the 80s sci-fi films with the big beehive hairs and, like, the, <laughs> the metallic dresses, and these people were walking around like robots? And wow. I thought, this is really avant-garde, like, and, yeah. the, you know, it, it's good that the, the classical world, for all their faults, um, that, you know, they are breaking down some of those, those, uh, those boundaries and bringing it into that kind of modern... They um, are, era. yeah, and I, I just feel like it's definitely a very hit and miss situation. I think, yeah. like, for for me, because this was actually a really memorable one uh, for me, which was actually with Magic Flute. Uh huh. I went to see. I've seen a couple of productions of that, mm -hmm. and uh, I went to see one at um, ENO English okay. National Opera in mm -hmm. in London at the London Coliseum, and. I, I mean, I was expecting the fantasy production, mm. yeah, and there was nothing to suggest that it wasn't. But they did the whole thing like in like tracksuits, and uh, and I don't know, it was trying to be like kind of cool and modern in, in yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. But it was like very understated, and and like yeah, like the prince is wearing some like <laughs> kind <laughs> of hip hop tracksuit. <laughs> But he's a he's an opera oh, singer. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 the weirdest thing was the Queen of the Night, which I definitely don't mean any uh, disrespect to the mm. performer because I might be completely ignorant to mm -hmm. who she is. Um, but it was an old woman, and right. she was in a wheelchair, and 
she just really couldn't you know she had an old voice of right, obviously okay, like yeah, it just yeah. didn't have the kind of uh power that you'd uh, yeah. expect from that that part mm-hmm. and so i i just couldn't help but find the whole thing like very underwhelming and yeah. i kind of like would have been okay with it if i knew that that's what i was gonna get yeah, but i was expecting to get you know big fantasy opera and like yeah, yeah, eventually I had to go to the moment. Royal Opera House to see their production and, and that Which much redeemed better. it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. then you had the Queen of the Night with the, you know, yeah, yeah, the that epic definitely. dark queen look, you know. Which is what you want, yeah. I think for, for sure. uh, it's hard, isn't it? Because age like comes under, under scrutiny quite a lot. When that particular one that I was talking about with Madame Butterfly, Butterfly is very young. She's like kind of 13 mm. to 16 in the whole of the programme. Um, but Puccini wrote it for a voice that needed to be robust and big. He wrote for big, big sopranos, dramatic sopranos um, mm. mainly. Um, and there's no way that anyone of that age could have played that role vocally because mm. it just they just wouldn't have been big enough. Right. But the person that was playing it you know, she was she was a lot older, and it kind of so not young enough to, for the role. <laughs> yeah, you kind of like have to you have mm. to retrain the brain and think right. Okay, so they're playing a character. Is it is it right? Yeah, mm. it's a, there's a real fine line, um, and sometimes they don't get it quite right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't think that. Yeah, for me, having the queen of the night in a wheelchair totally diminishes her character because she's strong, yeah. powerful. You know, exactly. she's aggressive. Like it, you know, the best I've ever seen. It's probably Diane Damrau. She she played it really really well. Um, not I've not seen it live, but on on mm. YouTube, she's probably my favourite. Um, she plays it incredibly, and she's like strong, you know, big. And I that's don't what you need for that role. I don't know if um I'm I'm not not too good with the names here, but yeah. I know that there is if you probably search on YouTube the Queen of the Night. Yeah. Uh, Aria, there there is like a big high production video there that's Diane Damrell yeah that's yeah, and, yeah, yeah and I think I think that that is from the Royal Opera House uh, that might be in London see. the yeah. one that the production that I saw yeah, yeah which was with that look and that you know that yeah yeah with the set on and... it and she's got like yeah it's, it's brilliant it's really yeah, brilliant. yeah. it's a funny old world yeah. the classical world very very strange <laughs> it, it's a funny one I mean how 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 immersed would you say you are in the classical world not very um, if I'm honest with you, I'm, mm. uh, I find it's a tough one. I'm not, uh, and I always say this, I'm not a classical singer. I'm not an mm. opera singer. I have classical technique in some of my voice. Um, th- the people that are classical singers, um, are so well-trained, are so disciplined and yeah. that is not me. Um, you know, I apply some of that. I have classical teachings and just because you're classically trained does not make you an opera singer. It's a big bugbear of mine. Um, mm. you know, these people are out there training t- like five or six hours every single day yeah, like yeah, getting yeah. you know getting getting themselves perfected and whilst i can kind of do some of that in a recording setting or even live to a degree um i would never be able to sustain like you know that level of work without undergoing years and years of training and it's a real big in- injustice for them and um, for me to say oh yeah i'm an opera singer um because yeah, i'm not yeah, yeah. So for that respect, you, you know, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm very removed from it, but also I want to be removed from it as well, because I don't necessarily think that it's the most um, diverse. I don't think that mm. they um, have much flexibility and freedom with creativity. I think that it's very, very well, gate posted. How um, can you, when there's like a pretty defined repertoire of well, music exactly, from hundreds yeah. of years ago? You know? Exactly. You know, and, and I, I don't want to sing like that. You know, I don't want to sing a piece of music that someone maybe writ to be sung that way by somebody for hundreds of years ago. I want to do mm. my own thing. I don't want to be governed by, you know, you, you must go up on that note because that's what's written. No, thanks. I'm cool. Um, yeah. like, that's not for me. You know, and recently, uh, without getting too in, into the, the political side of things, you know, you, you read about Anna Trebko um, and the fact that she's just done blackface in Aida, and you think, right, what are you do, right. what are you playing at? You know, like why are you still being run by these 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 middle aged men that are so far removed from so, so society that it's yeah. um, you know it's just not right. It's not for me. Um, I love it, and I and I love the singers, and I love everything about the music, but I just don't like the ethos of it. It just doesn't doesn't sit with me at all. Yeah, I I, I, I see, you, man. I mean, um, I'm 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 with you there as well. I mm. think I could probably. Uh, say I'm in a similar kind of wavelength yeah. with it, which is that I love classical music. Mm-hmm. Um, I truly admire what people can do, singers and musicians. Yeah. It, it is phenomenal, and as you say, I I do put that in a different category. Yeah, uh-huh. and in fact, I mean, I I love music and I love all kinds of music, 
not all <laughs> you yeah. people say that as a cliche. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love all music, but I love a lot of a lot of uh, you know, music across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I and I must admit that like with classical music it is almost in a in a different category. Yeah. Like I, I, I in a way I feel like that is like proper music. You know, that's like music music. Yeah. Like I pure. And I mean maybe my terminology is not good here. No, no, no. I agree with but you. But it's just that like modern music, mm -hmm. pop music like from mid twentieth century on, it's like that's kind of like a hybrid of music and pop mm -hmm. culture and entertainment and yeah. you know mm -hmm. all, all of these things and that is fantastic i think it's great for this almost new art form to have evolved and that's obviously what we're mm. we're we're really kind of involved with but classical music is is like pure <laughs> yeah yeah musicality and and what what uh those people i was i was gonna say were but obviously classical musicians today now uh what they're capable of is is phenomenal and yeah. And yeah, they are musical athletes. <laughs> oh, without a shadow you know? of a doubt. Yeah, it's it's doubt. it's a whole other thing for mm, for, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It is. It's crazy. It's a, it's a different world. Um, and but I, I I really really champ like champion them. Like they are so so yeah. good at what they do. Yeah, me too. Um, they really are. But it's just there's just some some bits it's, about it that don't sit well with me. <laughs> I, I think the thing is like because the the her inherent nature of it is that mm -hmm. it's um even in its name being classical, you know, it's is that, well, <laughs> yes, of yeah. course, but it's also, it's kind of inherently like conservative or, mm -hmm. or the, it's like, I'm trying to think of the right word. There's a, there's a, there's a word that would really nail this that I can't uh, get to my tongue right now, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's encapsulated within an error and therefore yeah. like really now, uh, trying to think of it, that's you're gonna, you're gonna, cap, gonna caption this. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've nearly got it, but yeah. you know, it, it almost has this like renaissance element to it. You know yeah. what I mean? Where mm -hmm. it's like it's not it it whether we like it or not, it, yeah. it isn't relevant in a contemporary mm -hmm. way. It's more yeah. like uh, celebrating a kind of tradition. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, um, and and yeah, again, like of course, and no disrespect to modern classical musicians composers and such um because they can do phenomenal stuff but mm -hmm. that is just a you know it's a niche yeah mm -hmm. in terms of what's relevant and no one obviously is going to be like beethoven or mozart ever no. again like no. that that era has yeah. has it's gone moved on. you know yeah it's moved on and so i guess because it's so inherently kind of traditional it's it's a hard thing doing this mm -hmm. kind of like okay, we want to still kind of try and keep it relevant to younger generations. Yeah. But man, honestly, like attention span, right? Yeah. Like we, there's, that's always a, a, a talked about topic and you look at like content and rate of consumption yeah. and the fact that younger and younger people obviously have, um, you know, shorter attention spans, at least in terms yeah. of what they enjoy, you know, that's, like yeah. in terms of content, man, if you get most kids and try and sit them in a four hour opera, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> man, I don't even know why I do it. <laughs> it. It's hard work sometimes, yeah. you know. I, I, yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I saw Die Valkyrie from Wagner and that oh, was over goodness. six hours long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time to sit in a chair and it wasn't in the 18th, 19th century perhaps because, you know. anything else piquing their interest. That's what that, it is, yeah. That's, yeah, it was, obviously that's a, that's a wonderful time, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not usual by today's standards, right? And Definitely. therefore, it, it, it's inherently kind of um, almost like you're getting a window back in time to go, mm -hmm. <laughs> to go and yeah. experience that. Yeah, definitely. No, I agree. I think it's, it, you know, it's there's definitely still a place for it. Um, there's definitely still a place for it, but you're mm. right. It's kind I of- I hope that, funny. yeah, I hope they will yeah. always be celebrated for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, me too. And I, I hope all those people that continue to train, you know, they get treated well and you know it's mm. a beautiful career for them because they deserve mm -hmm. it they work so hard <laughs> yeah musicians yeah. and vocalists alike yeah Definitely. yeah as we mentioned earlier like it's it's humbling when you when mm -hmm. you see what these yeah. people are capable yeah. of yeah, yeah like, definitely yeah i'll stick to putting a couple of oohs and ahs in everywhere lowering the larynx and hoping for the best <laughs> that's it <laughs> And that's it, and 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 it works perfectly. Again, mm -hmm. what we're doing is uh, an amalgamation. It's like yeah. a multimedia 
thing that all, that all of us contemporary artists are doing, mm -hmm. really. And and so y you see that the muse yeah. invokes that queen of the night mm -hmm. <laughs> part yeah. where yeah, yeah, it goes yeah. into classical voice, mm -hmm. you know, kind mm -hmm. of style that in yeah. invokes it alludes to opera. You yeah, know? definitely. Um, but yeah, obviously we're not trying to claim that uh, <laughs> we we compose like a classical yeah. opera there. <laughs> yeah. But, but the I, flavor. But then, is, but then on the other side there. of the coin, of I think that actually some of the metal the com compositions, like some of the big metal compositions, you know, we look at maybe like some of the Nightwish stuff, you know, even yeah. the stuff that we've done, uh, there's there's a massive amount of technicality that goes into that as well, you know, and, mm. and it's, it's extremely um, profound to see like that um, sort of technicality that you'd be used to seeing in opera translate into yeah. kind of the metal industry. And a lot of people, you know, when they think about metal, especially if they're not involved in it or they, you know, they don't immerse themselves into that world, they think that in most of the time it's just noise and screaming and it's loud and it's obnoxious, mm. it's vulgar. But when you break it down and you start really analysing those tracks, there's so many different, um, you know, parts to it. There's so many different styles to mm. it. And a lot of the vocalists in metal could run rings around, the, you know, the other genres, classical, exclusive. Sure. But even to a point, I guess, classical in, in different styles. You know, well, they, they might be really, more dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you look at some of the people that can shift that more classical sound um, and do it quite nicely. And then, you know, also go into that massive power bell, into something a little bit softer in the chest voice, into a growl. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's so yeah. much more dynamics that are going on there. And people nowadays, I think people that ingest music, they want higher and they want louder. And it's really sad mm. that that's the case. Um, but people then start to try and push towards that to get noticed. And I, I think that having that dynamic is really, really important as a singer in both aspects. Because A, you've got to show off sometimes because that's what people mm. want to see. But mm. you've also got to rein it back in and say, yeah, I can do that. But have you heard this? Um, yeah. and, and metal does that really well. Metal does that mm -hmm. really, really, really well. I, I agree. Mm. Yeah, it's all about that light and shade and the dynamics. Yeah. And as you say, more and more modern music is... <laughs> redundant in dynamic yeah. you know mm -hmm. like pop music has almost no dynamic you right. know uh, yeah. in terms of the charts you know uh -huh. yeah it's yeah. like a, a flat line all the way through and and so that's why it's almost strange sometimes to listen to classical music for people who aren't familiar with it because like there is silence in classical music yeah like mm -hmm. it's actually a pretty important part massively <laughs> of yeah. it yeah. Yeah. and you can't you can't just go silent in in a three minute one. song, you know, <laughs> yeah. like people are like, "What's happened?" You know, radio's broken. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I'm, I must admit, like, whilst I enjoy lots of different things, a lot of the music that I like from more recent mm. uh, releases, can you know, really contemporary stuff as well, is is in metal because I just find that yeah, it has that sense of creativity mm -hmm. to it that I just find stimulating i just yeah. enjoy as you say all of this this intricacy not just for the sake of of it or you know the the musical masturbation of yeah yeah, yeah definitely of like how far someone can play like you know that's a part of it that's cool that's a feature too but it's it's just like it's just yeah it's just the layers the intricacy of the music the craftsmanship you yeah. know mm -hmm. that kind of invokes as you say like what the great yeah. composers were, were doing yeah. in times Absolutely. before. Yeah, you find it a lot in prog music, don't you? Like Meshuggah and stuff like that. Like, yeah, they, they think, oh my god, what are they what are they kind of doing? Exactly, Meshuggah <laughs> with like yeah. the polyrhythms and yeah. stuff for sure. Like, I mean, the, prog <laughs> prog is its whole own thing these days, isn't it? Like, yeah. what even is progressive music now? Yeah. It's almost like just something that is too hard to define in anything yeah. else how far can we go from it actually being music but it still being music <laughs> yeah. yeah but you know i i love i love prog and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing for sure but as well it's like you know i suppose prog started in the kind of uh, 70s especially right mm -hmm. prog rock yeah 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 but and then you've got like prog metal which was yeah. fairly d clearly defined with dream theater and yeah very much the so. alike yeah. mm -hmm. but now nowadays it seems like yeah progressive is sort of a label that's put yeah. all over the place yeah. and you don't know what it's going to sound like no. if <laughs> no, <laughs> if it's got progressive on it i mean a lot of uh, sometimes <laughs> a lot of gen metalcore bands or whatever mm -hmm. are like considered progressive now yeah mm -hmm. but they're also kind of like metalcore so like as a you know prog person like <laughs> yeah that's not necessarily what you'd expect mm -hmm. but then like 
yeah i, I yeah i find i find that funny but yeah, i okay. guess i guess in a way pro, 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 to being progressive it's mm-hmm. like almost more of like a philosophy isn't it yeah you know, yeah, 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 yeah yeah than yeah. an actual boundaries sound. and like changing things you know moving things forward but mm-hmm. yeah, that, it is. Yeah, it's a great subgenre, uh, if you can call it yeah. that. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's it. Yeah, it's a yeah. great philosophy. <laughs> yeah, musical yeah. philosophy. Yeah. We end up all singing off key and playing off key, and then we'll just call it prog soon. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you know, jazz is the new. Yeah. Oh yeah, the yeah. New There's no wrong note. <laughs> Which there is, believe me. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure, man. Mm. So ah. Uh, well, I feel like there's probably um, all, all kinds of things we could talk about here. Yeah, it, 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 obviously, there's only a, a finite time. So, uh-huh. is there anything in particular that you, that, that you wanna that you wanna mention? Not, not really, not for me. I just want to say, if you haven't listened to the track already, go and listen to it. Like Blood, Sweat, and Tears has gone into it, and we totally love it and enjoy every moment of it. So, you know, share that moment with us, <laughs> um, and you know, hopefully, we'll get to we'll get to do it again very soon. Oh yeah, man, yeah. that that would be an absolute pleasure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hopefully, people enjoy this track, and yeah. you know, as, as Pete says, like if you if you do, then then let us know, <laughs> yeah. and share it, and share and, it. and and you know. That will tell us that mm-hmm. you know we we need to get in and and do it again yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely, and let, and let us know where where you'd like to see it go as well. Because mm-hmm. as we've mentioned here, like there there's definitely some we're pushing boundaries yeah. with this project. That's this uh, progressive philosophy <laughs> that we're <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, in, yeah no, installing within that. And so I, I would be very intrigued to see where it can go next mm-hmm. and 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 um what we can do yeah within the confines that we've set yeah definitely totally agree <laughs> <laughs> okay cool well you know I, I suppose we'll wrap it up there for yeah. now man like it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you like Thank you. i think that we, we can definitely do this again sometime yeah. because there's yeah. no doubt lots more that we can talk about series two perhaps <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah no it's been That's great it. and it's really nice to actually catch up and mm-hmm. have a, an, a proper a proper chat verbally rather than uh, than than writing yeah. down so yeah thanks for that thank you for listening to this episode of creating a universe a special thanks to pete for joining me it's always such a pleasure to chat if you haven't already make sure to check out urania fantasia the arcane muse the debut single from the new levanaverse artist pete and i created together is available now on all major